And welcome to Smoke and Mirrors. Indeed, yes. Love that audio. That is a nice song. professional yeah cool so welcome to smoke and mirrors and where we're here talking about in this case anime anime yeah and uh watching some anime and going a little deeper on what's going on in there and providing our opinions on that i'm brent i'm evan so welcome to this first attempt recording of the podcast smoke and mirrors yeah so we'll see how this goes um, so as we were talking earlier, w- one of our big plans and ideas here is to, um, as you mentioned, dive deeper into a lot of these shows and explain uh, um, more instead of just, oh, we liked it, we didn't like it, and go into more detail. There's so many facets to yeah. uh, Japanese animation that uh, if you don't really think about it, you can kind of pass over it but when you when you really start looking into it there's there's all sorts of cultural differences and um, in some cases those are adjusted for American viewers Mm -hmm. and uh, then there's there's also references to uh, uh, what people have grown up with in their culture that uh, I mean there's a canon of literature of customs and 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 other uh, concepts that uh, are bypassed, but that's just one aspect of anime. There's so many different ones that uh, we can discuss from story story writing, uh, narrative technique, color, uh, the actual nuts and bolts of putting together an anime, yeah. the history of anime, mm. uh, where that anime developed in the entire process of animation, and uh, I mean, that's just scratching the surface. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brent, Brent's much more knowledgeable on this than me. I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of the ignorant guy who's saying, "Okay, well, what is anime?" <laughs> now, there's there's plenty to talk about and plenty to, to dive into. So, uh, to that point, our first anime today was uh, the first Tenchi Moyo OVA, the first Ryooki OVA, as it's called. And uh, so, our our format here Ryooki 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 is, is, is the name of it. Our, Ryooki is one of the characters in, uh, in Tenchi who gets mm. introduced, I think, in the next episode, actually. Hmm. Um, and uh, and th- it's, a, it's a great point. One of the things about Tenchi is that it is a huge franchise, mm. as we were talking about earlier. So the different th- there are considered several different timelines within mm. that franchise. So certain characters get introduced in some timelines, and then they're not in other shows because they weren't introduced in those timelines. So it gets very complicated very quickly. So that's so so to use sort of a a, a, a sci-fi analogy. Mm. Stargate had Stargate, and then they had Atlantis, and then they had mm-hmm. Stargate Universe, and all these things kind of overlapped. Yeah, there were similar characters, but different storylines in each of them. Is that is that the way this? This kinda... is a little different. So for so for example, after this OVA came out, they they released a TV series, and they had a completely different origin story in mm. the TV series. So the characters have different backgrounds, different um, places they came from, different reasons for actually being in the show. Hmm. So in that, the TV show introduced new characters to the core crew, which were not introduced in any of the other OVA releases. So Hmm. each of those have their own kind of little um, approaches to the same universe. You keep using this term OVA. (laughs) <laughs> what, what, what is this OVA thing? Good question. Um, so an OVA is called, uh, it stands for an original video animation. You'll also hear OAV, original animation video. Hmm. Uh, they're just translation differences. And it basically refers to a direct-to-video miniseries is the best way of, of describing it. Um, so what will happen is an anime studio will decide to release a show directly to the audience um, and basically sell it by putting ads in magazines and things along those lines, and uh, and and sell it directly to people instead of having to find a, a broadcast slot and and all those sorts of things. And one of the nice things is that it gives the anime studio more freedom 
to say that they can, um, you know, they, they need 40 minutes for this episode, 30 minutes for that episode, expand and contract. And they can obviously, because you're, you're not broadcasting, you can show um, more adult content than you could otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives, you, it gives you more freedom, but it's a little riskier because, you know, you got to hope folks will buy it. Do a lot of anime series do these OVAs? Um, th there, there are a lot of OVAs. So in any given year in Japan, there are between 100 and 150 new TV shows premiered every week, anime TV shows premiered uh, every year in Japan. And then there are another 100 or so OVAs. Hmm. Uh, now that includes, um, shall we say, the, the more adult of the adult <laughs> side of the OVAs. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there are certainly dozens of those every year. Uh, one of the advantages is if you have a property that's successful but not huge, um, instead of going to the, uh, the expense of doing a full TV series, you might do a two or three episode OVA, sell that to fans. It's a, a much less uh, uh, simpler risk than mm. a full TV show. I suppose if it's successful enough, they can then parlay that into something bigger. Exactly, yeah. Enough fan base, mm -hmm. maybe turn it into a series. Right, exactly. Um, and with all of these things, it's a question. It's, you know, most franchises in Japan are a question of kind of uh, baby steps, of moving from, from one step to the other, of saying, okay, we have a successful manga series, let's try an anime series. Right, the anime series was successful, let's do a video game. And sort of bouncing back and forth and trying these different things and seeing what works. Wow. So yeah. a little cross-pollination between different groups, uh, gamers, mm -hmm. readers, video watchers. Now, exactly. manga. Ah. What is this manga stuff? All right. So, <laughs> uh, so it, uh, if anime is the, uh, the, the animation of this, manga are the comics. Hmm. So uh, manga are almost always black and white comics. They are almost always originally... Um, produced in magazines. So you'll have a three or 400 page magazine with many different stories inside it. That's a big magazine. It's three a very or 400 big magazine, pages. yes. Uh, now, uh, granted, three or 400 pages are for the, the, the bigger, more popular magazines. Um, but you'll definitely get a few hundred pages in, in one of these things. Um, they're, all, they're usually uh, printed in newsprint, very, very cheap and inexpensive. Hmm. And they'll, they'll come out uh, sometimes monthly, sometimes even weekly. Uh, and uh, each, each issue will have new episodes of, uh, of a particular story, usually about 13 pages worth of new content, and uh, they'll continue these stories, and then those get collected into uh, trade paperbacks, as we're used to over here, called Kekobon. Oh, there we go, yeah. Would that be a sample? Yeah, that, that's a great example right there. Um, so that is exactly a, a manga magazine. I don't recognize which one it is. Let me see if I can tell from the inside. Interesting. Somebody had uh, lost that somewhere, and yeah. I had no way of returning it to them. <laughs> but yes, that's exactly what it is. So um, every magazine is aimed at a particular audience, of course, and some of them are aimed more at young boys, some at older boys, um, young girls, older women, things along those lines. So you mean even adults <laughs> read manga? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, there's uh, quite a lot of manga that's aimed at an older audience. Um, I'd say it's, it's fairly similar to the market over here. Well, um, so much like there are a significant number of adults in America who read comics, but it's certainly not everyone, similar in Japan. There are um, a lot of people who, who, who read manga, a lot of adults who read manga. Um, there's a stereotype from the anime um, side of things that everyone in Japan reads manga. And that uh, you know, manga is just... Um, being sold everywhere and folks are reading it all the time. And uh, while it is certainly um, more broadly um, read than it is over here, um, I was lucky enough to be in Japan a couple of years ago and I never saw anyone reading manga in public. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was happening you know, here and there, but on, on trains, folks reading the newspaper or looking at their phones, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly uh, it's um, because manga has been around for so long in Japan and because it's um, tackled so many different different um, topics, hmm. um, and it's it's been more accepted to, to be read. Um, it is a uh, um, it's a little easier to, to get out there. Hmm. But generally speaking, in terms of anime, uh, most anime are adaptations 
of existing manga, sometimes video games, sometimes novels. So a serial. Exactly, yeah. Um, and it's one of the reasons why anime can be so weird so often, <laughs> because they're adapting something that may have been going on for years, may be new oh, relatively. That can be tricky, trying to catch all your readers up, or your viewers up to what all the readers already have exactly. as an experience. And moreover, generally speaking, um, there's something of an expectation that the... Um, well, the folks making the anime know that the manga is out there, and they know the viewers know the manga is out there. So often the anime is made as something of an ad for the original manga. Mm. The hope is that folks will watch the anime and then go back to read the manga to see the story as it worked out in the manga. Oh. So it's, again, that cross-promotion thing that, okay, you've re read this, now go back and read this, which tells you the, you know, the real story of the character, I the want backstory. background, exactly. the story, the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, this is actually very interesting. I'd, I'd be curious to, to dig in and see what uh, uh, what magazine this is. That's very cool. Tenchi's actually a, 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 a great segue into that because Tenchi it was a um, it was not based on a manga. It's one of the unusual anime series where it's actually an original property. Hmm. Um, this I think started um, significantly with the release of Bubblegum Crisis back in the '80s, which Bubble was a, um, a, a sci-fi uh, action OVA. And that was an original property and very successful. Of course, anytime you do an original property, it's risky hmm. because there's the question of, okay, um, you have to do all the work up front. You have no audience to begin with. And you have to sell, sell them on this new property. With a manga or a video game, you know you have that built-in audience. Hmm. So um, Tenchi was uh, released back in 1990 originally, and it was that attempt to create an original product sell it um, directly to fans and hope that they would uh, would actually buy it. Unfortunately, they did. Wow. So so did the, the whole idea of kind of uh, cross cross pollination of, 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 of video games and mm. manga and animation, is that a relatively new concept? That goes all the way back to arguably the first anime series, Astro Boy. Um, so anime uh, depends on, on kind of who you ask and how, how you slice it, but the first anime series is generally considered to be Astro Boy 1963, uh, which was um, originally a, a manga by Osamu Tezuka, and he loved the animation. He decided he was, darn it, he was going to make a weekly half-hour animated TV show out of his manga Astro Boy. Oh, wow. And uh, he did it um, uh, <laughs> with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> um, and the... Uh, one of the ways they did it was by doing a lot of aggressive cross-promotion and a lot of aggressive advertisement. There's a, a famous shot in Astro Boy where the characters are jumping out of a spaceship, and at one point they, they jump and they, they slide down a roll of candy, like a Lifesavers <laughs> kind of a thing. A product um, placement. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and, and indeed, after they do that, one of the characters turns back and says, what was that? Uh, and they go on with the episode. Um, but they, they absolutely did, did all of that to, to get as much money as they could from advertisers. And uh, uh, because one of the problems with anime in general is it's very expensive to make, mm. as you can imagine. Um, just all those drawings being put on, on screen. So um, um, you know, anything you can do to recoup that cost is, is going to help. So, yeah, so it, it absolutely it started back with, with Astro Boy in, in 63 and then... Um, from that point on, it, it's it's the safest thing. It's it's the most most um, straightforward way of doing something. You have a built-in audience. You can you can make your thing, and then you go on from there. Excellent. Yeah. So this was this <coughs> Tenchi Tenchi Moyo, Moyo which yeah. is a um, bit of a joke. Uh, so uh, uh, the, Tenchi is the name of the main character. Um, the the words Ten and Chi also mean heaven and earth. Hmm. Uh, which is a, a joke to the fact that there's a sci-fi element to this. There's space and there's Earth going on in there. Um, and then Moyo means no need for. <laughs> so the joke is that Tenchi is kind of in the middle of all this and, and kind of running to, to, to catch up with everything. But nobody really needs him. He doesn't really need to be there. Um, but he just happens to be in the middle of all this. Hmm. Um, but then you can also translate it as no need for heaven and Earth, which has a whole other sort of meaning within the show. <laughs> Um, so it's uh, um, it gets back to there's a, a strong Japanese love of wordplay, mm. and you see that a lot coming up in, in anime of, of different meanings of words. Um, so yeah, so this, this spawned this uh, this whole franchise. 
So, so let's uh, shall we? Yeah, exactly. Take a look so at some of this. Let's look at a little bit of, bit of this. So Tenchi starts um, quite unusually, actually, with this opening uh, sequence, which shows various characters, and of course you don't know who these characters are, um, but it gives you an idea of who they are, of, of their their, their uh, character designs. Now, one thing you'll see in a lot of anime series is a, um, a pop song, basically, as the opening theme song. And Tenchi does not have that because, um, well, who knows? But uh, generally speaking, because this was an original work, it was probably simpler just to use um, uh, a composer's song, have the, have the composer compose a new song instead of trying to license something. Kind of has a Paul Hardcastle and the Jazz Masters mm, yeah. feel to it. <laughs> it's really a very simple opening in a lot of ways. It's just, it's simple visuals, it's showing off the characters, showing off the relation. Um, and uh, showing off visuals without really tying them together significantly. But it gives you an idea of what's going on. Now one of the things we talked about is how interesting how, starting off in this, this show, how it starts very quietly. Mm. Uh, it's very pastoral. It starts out in this um, Are those June bugs? Those are June bugs. Yeah. Well, the cicadas, actually. Cicadas? Yeah. Um, uh, in Japan in the summer, they're everywhere. And so that's a classic sound of summer. Um, and so you start with this, this very quiet opening in a classic Japanese countryside setting Tenchi. in a shrine. Tenchi. And when you see things like... Um, a broom on the ground, a bucket. That's your hint that chores haven't been completed. Those, <laughs> those things should have been put away Subtle. if they were done. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as we were talking about before, one of the interesting things here too is how Tenchi is very much... Uh, uh, Bit of a twerp. <laughs> I bet you are looking for beasts. So that's where they are. I... <laughs> you weren't trying to sneak in there against my orders, were you? <laughs> no, I wasn't. It is the ancient law of this Masaki shrine. And you are no exception to that legacy. <laughs> but really, you want to see what's in there, don't you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> if you can take them from me. Let's see how good you really are. <laughs> when you grasp the keys from my hand. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not ready to do that yet. No. Work harder, and remember, your chores are part of your training. Mm. But <laughs> yeah, right, he has the keys. <laughs> So one of the things this is actually doing is kind of telling us what kind of a story we have, hmm. uh, because we're seeing the fact that it's about a, a young boy, um, well, I say young boy, teenage boy, um, that generally tells us that you know, what the um, audience age is. So generally the protagonist's age is pretty close to the, um, the age of the target audience. So we're probably looking at you know teenage boys as, as our audience, uh, and we're also seeing that uh, he wants to be a, an adult. He wants to be more mature. He wants to have these uh, access to things. Access to, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but he's not ready yet. Uh, obviously, he didn't do his chores. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Um, so the, uh, uh, that's the hint that this is a, a story about maturity hmm. uh, and about uh, growing up and so, sort of finding uh, uh, that maturity and things. Curiosity killed a cat. Lucky for me, I'm not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Oh. 
inside the cave. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned before when we were watching this how silent Tenchi, it is. Oh, very. The, 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 well, the silence is something. Time after time oh, you know it's he's caught. <laughs> why is that, Grandpa? I'll tell you why, my boy. It really adds to the Demon effect of the caves. It true. does, yeah. It's, Demon, no. <laughs> it's true. Now listen carefully for what I'm about to tell you really happened. It was a long time ago. Those are some Demon, big anime eyes. I really are. <laughs> Its strength was enormous and terrible. It destroyed villages, burned everything, and our people suffered greatly because of its evil powers. What happened to the demon? One day, a ship like a dragon appeared from the sky. On its back rode a mighty samurai. He fought the demon using a sword with great spiritual powers. Now the demon sleeps, held prisoner in this shrine the sword planted in the ground keeps watch over it that samurai was yosho your ancestor tenshi remember your name and what it means heaven and earth you must remember and respect your ancestor hmm. remember <laughs> So we see here a lot of wards, a lot of uh, paper, those diamond-shaped yeah. paper hanging things, mm -hmm. meant to ward off evil. Hmm. Huh? Yet he still continues to the shrine. <laughs> <laughs> off to honor the ancestors. Mm, not so much. <laughs> By taking their sword. <laughs> Let's see this thing. <laughs> Well, and this gets down to that uh, that tension between, you know, respecting the past, but also, okay, how much of this is really true? I mean, mm. how much of this is just rusty old piece of junk? Rusty old piece of ah. junk. Ah. Give me a break! The sword that cuts through a rock. Ha! And being that age and testing. Uh -oh. Yeah. What's happening? Ah. And again, we know that that uh, Tenchi's grown up in this shrine, so we know we know that he knows how all this is supposed to now? work. Mm -hmm. oh, think, genius. Hmm? Oh, past way. Hmm. Ah, that's cold. Uh, mm, oh, deep in the mountain. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Now deeper. Oh. So we're having some video problems. I'm gonna pause this for a little bit. We can, we can talk yeah, about some so of what we've seen. Sorry about the frame rate viewers. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. That's first episode. Yeah, that's what we expect. So what are some of your thoughts on this on this episode? Well, it's it's an interesting thing seeing the, the, the whole shrine. That's, mm. that's something that uh, most American citizens don't really think about <laughs> these type of shrines. And uh, the idea of being up high on a mountain and then mm. inside the cave for sort of shelter mm. to keep keep it separate and the idea of uh uh <laughs> warding off evil spirits mm. is is, is kind of interesting it's a, it's neat to be able to see into someone else's culture and yeah and learn a little bit about it that way and of course the impetuous impetuousness <laughs> of youth uh is what they're telling me really you know are they are they, are they <laughs> just you know here he's saying all this valuable respect my elders and look this sword here uh, it's a piece of junk oh, how am i supposed to respect them with it this piece of junk won't even cut through a stone they're telling me it cuts through a stone and then all of a sudden uh it does cut through a stone <laughs> yeah so, so that testing it and uh do you find that this is it's one of the interesting things i mean this is a very this is showing japanese culture very directly 
and yet it's still very comprehensible. Mm -hmm. it, it still makes sense what you're seeing. You know, they don't try to show you a lot of ritual or things mm -hmm. along those lines, but it, um, it, it's pretty clear just even for us who don't have that exposure, what's sort going of on. A, sort of a by the way, Yeah, here it is in the background and <coughs> as life goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. What did you think of, and um, particularly seeing this this shot here, um, mm. what were your thoughts on the overall color use uh, in this episode? It, it, it has sort of the surrealistic feel to it. It's, mm. it's really interesting uh, uh, because they're in a cave. Yeah. And, and so the lighting, uh, somehow you have to portray mm. something other than absolute darkness so your viewers can see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's not going to be super bright mm. as a sunny day, but this has some interesting shading and coloring that's going on here, yeah. as if light from another source is is mm -hmm. drawing him. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's also interesting in, in this shot in particular. Um, but how, you know, if, if you are in any cave, you, know, you might see certain colors, but you wouldn't see this kaleidoscope. No, it's it's very. Uh, almost psychedelic. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> in that um, respect. And, and overall, and this is one of the things that makes uh, uh, an OVA different f than a, a TV series, in particularly, is that use of shadow and that use of multiple colors. Hmm. Um, and we can see here there are um, several different colors used on for you know for skin tone, for the different uh, parts of his uh, uh, of his clothing uh, that really get across that that heightened um, uh, lighting scheme within there. And uh, if I can just jump forward and see a few of these, uh, some other images here. Uh, let's see if we can get a good, oops, that, that's way too far. Never mind. <laughs> um, let's jump, try to jump forward to oh. the light. Yeah, yeah, the, the lights. Um, of course, I just made it get a, a foot. Um, yeah, uh, the, the fight in the, the schoolyard, of course, is colored very, uh, very dramatically. Oh, yeah, the contrast. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly, um, and and similar to um, you know, what you're talking about before, it's it's a uh, yeah, it would be dark, but they light it just enough for you can so you can see what's going on. Um, in fact, let's see if we can see a little bit of, of this this sequence here after he's he's found the demon. I just need to let out my anger on you right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Tenji? <laughs> You're gonna have to run a lot faster than that, Earthling. <laughs> <laughs> Almost cartoony sound effects. Okay, now. <laughs> and, and again, here you see that that use of color yeah, to, yeah, to, to you really get a motif and, mm -hmm. and and sort of a feeling as well, while also not you know overwhelming the viewer with a lot of colors. I mean, you have this you know the, the, the blue hair, the sort of uh, light green, almost teal outfit with the pink, um, but that gives you that that distinct color scheme. And even in this uh, this uh, very sim uh, simple. Ready location. Not. Here I come. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sound effects. <laughs> This actually gets to something else uh, uh, we see interesting in th that uh, the Tenchi does, and you see, I think, very frequently in anime, is this idea of revealing characters and revealing their abilities directly to the viewer without explanation. Hmm. Where characters will have powers, they'll have backstory, they'll, they'll know things, and they won't explain to us why they have that. It's just, here it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and you'll find out as you... <laughs> absolutely. Uh, which is, I think, something that... Uh, 
know, in, in the West with our, 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 our love of that kind of, that kind of logic and structure uh, that, that we, uh, we don't do as often and uh, they seem a little more comfortable with over there. You suddenly get to know your character within five minutes and you're right <laughs> into the story. Here you get to know your character mm. as the story progresses. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. This is interesting. That the, this fight is going on in a school. Mm -hmm. and it seems there's sort of a a floor plan for mm. the schools that's common yeah. in a lot of anime, which makes it a comfortable because you know exactly where a place is when you start mm -hmm. looking at it. Oh, that looks a lot like the school. Okay, they're in the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Japan's modernization in the 50s and 60s, um, you know. They develop this this very effective and very standardized plan for schools, and it's just, that's that how you lay them out. <laughs> I'll just hide here while I figure out a plan. I, what is that? That smell? Oh, gas fumes. Huh? Gas fumes. <laughs> <laughs> Detention was also lauded in its day for oh, being uh, one of the. I've got a good plan. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, one of the first uh, anime English dubs mm. to really nail all the characters very well, Next. and to do so consistently across the entire cast, yeah. where there, you know, there had been certainly good voice actors before and good performances before, but uh, they managed to really assemble a, a lot of really effective voice actors for this. Had the English dub been been pretty close to the release date? Um, no, it was probably. Let me think. Um, ah, there's leaking gas. You'll start a fire. Yes. About five years, maybe. What is five gas? years. Yeah, five years later. So there were there weren't a lot of English dubs going on around that time. No, there, there weren't. Um, this was the, you know, the beginning of the of the big anime boom. Really, uh, was when when this was produced. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, obviously there have been English dubs, you know, Astro Boy and Star Blazers and all those, um, but they were much more sporadic hmm. than at this point, where they needed a large pool of, a of actors. I just used the oldest trick in the book. Ooh, what is it? I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> this character Ooh, takes an unexpected turn at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. No, I don't see anything. I think <gasps> the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him. <laughs> you you got to love the use of of a rather extreme expressions in this show too. Uh, characters just just they emote. <laughs> Not only does she have that that light mm. object, but now she's got lightning <laughs> between her. <laughs> and I just have to, of sweat. Yeah, and, and, and I have to point out, I mean, um, and this is this gets to, to why you want to do something in an OVA as opposed to a TV show, because you see how that's not just lightning, the lightning is flowing from one part of the sword to the, to the next. Um, there, there's a, a sensibility to the lightning instead of just somebody scratching some lightning in around it. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's very effective animation. Um. And of course the gas and yeah. <laughs> kaboom. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, she was kind of cute. <laughs> as far as people who are trying to kill me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, any other uh, thoughts on this episode? Well, um, I'm I'm kind of curious about a habit that I've seen, and mm -hmm. uh, he closes out his his series with it. He talks about a, a taking his hands and clapping them together, yeah. and uh, I've seen this done at, at mealtime. Mm. But he said it was a shrine habit. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of when people eat, they do a ikitakimas mm -hmm. before they before they eat mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if that's uh, is that is that something that, <laughs> that you might know about or so, so it, it is something that is done um, at shrines as kind of a blessing so mm. it, it's also done at, um, at homes but it is basically um, what you do when you are um, performing a blessing or preparing for something or ending something you do that mm. two claps like that um, so it's done 
very often in religious services. Um, but then it also sort of migrated out to, to the meal service, if you will. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, but it's something that, uh, um, generally speaking, you, know, you wouldn't do in real life unless you were doing it as a, a prayer for somebody or something along those lines, which is what he was doing, obviously, for <laughs> Yoko there. Or, oh, you know, she's dead now, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and it's, it gets to one of the things about, uh, and it's, it's actually a great point about how difficult it can be to translate one of these things mm. uh, because you have all of these different um, Japanese idioms and how to get that across to the American audience without um, <clears throat> sacrificing the original story or a particular line. I, I don't know off the top of my head what the original line for that was, but I don't know if he, he, he literally said that was that's an old shrine habit yeah, at that he, moment. He might have said something different and everybody knew. Yeah, of course. That's not old trying to be. We know that it's been around forever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it it, it it's uh, uh, it can get complicated real quickly. Yeah. But um, so, what do you think is going to happen next in the story? Well, I'm curious. I, I I now I've seen the end of this episode. Yeah. Which uh, is very interesting because mm -hmm. he thinks it's all done and over with. <laughs> he goes back home and surprise, mm. who's waiting for him in his bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that was a shocker. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can definitely see uh, hijinks ensuing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it it doesn't look like he's going to get rid of her as easily as he thinks. <laughs> And as he begins to learn how to wield his sword, yeah. he's he's going to deepen the relationship and find out a little mm. bit more, I think, about what all the power is that it has and yeah. what power he has over her. Mm -hmm. uh, what was her name again? Her name uh, was... Ryoko. Ryoko. Yeah. <laughs> what was your take on her sort of personality and her character? It was very interesting. Um, Initially, she's a demon mm -hmm. and kind of creepy zombie, not zombie, <laughs> but like mummy looking mm -hmm. uh, character. And then when she assumes her human form, she's a hot chick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Easier on the eyes, but mm -hmm. maybe just as deadly. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of in real life sometimes. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, but uh, the um, her, her character stops at a certain point. Mm. Uh, it seems like she's she's since she's been imprisoned for 700 years, mm. she's kind of lost her edge because yeah. she's caught by the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> hey, look over there. What's that? <laughs> I'm <Ooh. wrong. laughs> And when she passes by a mirror mm -hmm. after the explosion, she realizes that she's covered in soot and kind of disheveled and she doesn't continue pursuing. She stops and mm. takes her time, <laughs> neatens up and preens and primps and, and then pursues him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's very concerned about how she appears, mm -hmm. which is yeah. interesting. I, I, she, you never would have guessed when she was uh, a mummy <laughs> yeah. creature that she was care, caring about that kind of thing. Exactly. But uh, once he arrived home, mm. she was... Uh, Still wearing the same outfit, but it was a little bit looser fitting. <laughs> this is true. Uh, and uh, yeah. so so that has sort of a draw to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also interesting how her personality um, softens over the course of the episode. How, you know, by the end... You know, at, uh, They're almost conversing. Uh, exactly. Person-to-person -person basis <laughs> rather than, I kill you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, when he attacks her and, and hits the gem, she backs down immediately. Hmm. And and she's she she's much more conversational and she's kind of joking. She's like, oh, well, okay, I lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> here's my new hand. <laughs> she she doesn't run away. She doesn't right. suddenly vaporize. She mm -hmm. continues on and yeah, that was that, 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 that was interesting. Twist. Yeah, and uh, even when she decided that she was going to exact her revenge, mm. she didn't just go out and whack him yeah sneak up it was a straightforward uh, i'm here mm -hmm. to uh extract revenge <laughs> <laughs> but she meets him on the school roof <laughs> which is <laughs> well, it, there's the interesting playfulness to the character there is where there she's is. you know she's definitely very much comfortable in her own skin um and she has these things she wants to do and it's not particularly malicious she just you know needs to 
exercise for a bit. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't seem as malevolent as mm. uh, she was made out to be before she was, when she was <laughs> enslaved in, yeah. the, in the shrine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I wonder if he's going to start thinking, double thinking, mm. well, what is uh, everything that they've told me about this legend? Indeed. Is it, is it, is it really all what they said? Yeah. So they did say that this, the sword <laughs> you know mm -hmm. had and some yeah, power and it did so it initially didn't look like it did and <laughs> then it did and now there's the, now there's more to it yeah is it, how much more is there to the story of uh, the in, the in, <laughs> the whole the whole enshrining oh, <laughs> process yeah, yeah there, there's there, yeah there's a lot of questions still to be answered more questions <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um yeah, so that's the first episode of Tenchi uh OVA one and uh we'll we'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> but uh meanwhile we also want to talk about a, a show a little different than uh than that, which was a much more recent show called Yamada's First Time, hmm. also known as Bigata HK. And let me go back to our little view of that here. How much more recent would that be? <laughs> this this was pretty neat animation. Yeah, no, this came out. I believe it was two years ago. Two years um, ago, so, so pretty recent. Yeah, so I think the 2013 show. Um, uh, digital era. Digital era, absolutely. Uh, definitely aimed at a, I would say, a pretty similar age range as Tenchi in terms of teenage <laughs> boys, um, as as we'll see here as we go into a little bit of um, of this. And it's very interesting con contrasting the uh, the animation here. Hey, check out that I hear birds. Wow, Indeed. Is she a model I, or something? She's a Sorry? How do I switch uh, over to that? I think the full screen button there. That one? Uh, just the left. Ah. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> Let's rewind that a little bit. I love the clock sound. Yeah. <laughs> Check out that girl. Wow, she's like beyond pretty. Is she a model or something? I think she's a freshman. She's gorgeous. Where is she? Who's this pretty young girl? Introducing the lovely Yamada. <laughs> yes, that's her last name. Her first name's a secret. This is a girl of transcendent beauty. So it goes without saying that she's pretty hot and naked. All yucky hair removed, check. Skin glowing, check. Awesome. Another day of perfection. Except for the one spot. Oh, yes. The one spot. Why do you look like that? It's so weird. Does everyone have to look so strange? 15 years old and a virgin. She just started high school. Guess what she wants to do more than anything? Ever since I was little, I've had one goal for high school. It's practically a lifelong dream. I'm going to have sex with 100 guys. Wow. Hey, Whoa. Sex. Shouldn't you first, I don't know, find a boyfriend? Chica, have you ever heard of knocking? <laughs> 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 I'm here to catch that. Sorry, I'm late. Finally, 
What's the deal? You were the one who wanted to go shopping today, not me. Yeah, I know. I said I'm sorry. <laughs> so what are you gonna buy? A dictionary. Why? Can't you just school? Uh, no, not anymore. <laughs> I might have accidentally highlighted all the dirty words in red. You're like a seven-year-old boy. <laughs> Seriously. Hey there. Has anyone ever told you you're hot? What are you doing? Want to hang out with us? This stuff always happens when I'm out with Yamada. So, what do you want to do? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> think, think, think. Wow, awkward. You must not be as popular as I thought. <laughs> wow, what's that about? <laughs> Remember how I'm always telling you that you're too picky? This is what I'm talking about, and also why you can't find a boyfriend. Do I or do I not have the right to choose a good looking guy? It's just the good looking ones are also used to having sex. Finding a card carrying virgin well. cherry boy who's also a hottie <laughs> is practically impossible. You are messed up. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Look, that guy's shopping for a dictionary. I bet he highlighted the dirty words, too. I seriously doubt that, Yamada. <laughs> Talk about a plain Jane. He's average at best and isn't masculine like at all. Gosh, it's hard for me to find a guy to have my first time with. I can't imagine how rough it must be for him. <laughs> wow. Slap. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Three guesses how this is going to turn out. And... Yep. Ow. Oh, wait. That didn't hurt. <laughs> didn't hurt her. <laughs> <laughs> now that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate and in the path of your fall. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. Weird. What's he freaking out about? Wait, I kind of get it. He's probably never been this close to pretty. And he's a total gentleman. In terms of being my first, he's start and save. Just a safe beer, yes. He's a total safe <laughs> bet. I bet he plays it safe too. This could be my cherry picker. I'm Yamada. Sorry about falling on you. Huh? I've got to ask him. I can't not ask him. Um, I have a question. Yeah? I was wondering. You're still a cherry boy, am I right? Can we at least ask his name first? Apparently the answer is yes. You said you wanted a hot guy and now you're into him? Yeah, I do not get your taste in men like at all. I wonder who that was. Well, on the plus side, you got a good look at his face. Right about that. His I face. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> all I gotta do is get through the first time. After that, I'll be totally good to go. I just need to find the right guy to break the seal. <laughs> Don't tell me what you're thinking, okay? I already know it's about that bookstore dude. You're psychic. I just wonder where he is. He could be like my destiny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting right there! Look! He's sitting right next to you! Come on! Oh, Yamada. <laughs> Who's Yamada? Hey, so, uh, would it be okay if I take your picture? My picture? Uh, 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 you're <laughs> she's matching what I do. No way! <laughs> That's the girl I met at the bookstore yesterday. She's in my class. Uh, hey, what are you, deaf? I just said I didn't want my picture taken. Gah! <gasps> Yamada, he was giving it back to you. Uh, oh, that's my phone. Oops, I thought you were being a stalkery perv. I'm sorry. A stalkery perv? <laughs> <laughs> this ah. face is face such a joke. I remember you store yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> You're the cherry boy. You know what? I do have a name. It's Takashi Kosuda, okay? Kosuda. Ah. Ah. Kosuda. So that's plain Jane's name. Who'd have thunk he'd end up sitting right next to me? This is totally fate. Rejoice, Kosuda. You have been chosen to be the very first of a hundred last men who get the chance to have sex with me. <laughs> first, I need to find a way to get closer to him. I forgot my math book. Can we share? Of course. <laughs> I'm so good. Huh? So, listen up. You should let me borrow your math book now. What is wrong with this girl? <laughs> okay. What? Oh no! 
<laughs> she gave, gave it to her. <laughs> so not my style. I have to put myself out there. First, I gotta find a way to be alone with him. What are you doing? Maybe in his room, or in his car, or on a Ferris wheel? But those are all relationshipy things. I need a different tactic. <laughs> She's creeping along behind him. <laughs> oh, Yamada, it's you. Okay, I'm completely alone with him. Now what do I do? Oh crap, I didn't plan that far ahead. <laughs> Come on, stupid, think of something. <laughs> How are you supposed to seduce somebody? Just take off my clothes? I've never had a boyfriend before. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just take off my clothes. Take them off. Take them off. Take them off. <laughs> 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 I just have to pause to point out the idea <laughs> of, you know, a girl shoves you into a, a, a dark room, you know, <laughs> opens her shirt, and then runs off. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation. What? <laughs> I wish that happened to me more yeah, often. Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, this is One, funny. She teased mm -hmm. me by calling me a cherry boy. Two, she accused me of being a stalker and a perv. Three, she stole my math book. Four, she flashed her breasts at me. If there was no number four, I'd call her obnoxious. Maybe I'll just tell him she's weird. <laughs> Tony Moto will be assigned to the school disciplinary committee. Next, we need two library committee members. Anyone care to volunteer for this swanky job? And let us know one of you raised your hand. Color me shocked. Fine. I'll pick the volunteers myself then. Yamada and Kosuda. Oh. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> the soft romantic music. Are you okay? Here, let me have. <laughs> oh, did I hurt you? No, I'm good. <laughs> He's a tough guy. I wonder why I can't say that out loud. Hobble. I mean, hobble. <laughs> I there right when I need him. I didn't really like the library at first because it smells like dirty socks worn by a wet dog. But it does have very nice socks. You know you want to. It's just too accurate. <laughs> dirty socks worn by a wet dog. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. What do you need? It's just my tummy hurts. Huh? Will you please rub it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried taking anything? Yeah, I did earlier. It's not working. It hurts bad. Will you please touch it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did you stop? My chest feels kind of tight. No, I can't run away again today. I gotta focus. That feels so good. Will you rub higher? Higher? Higher! <laughs> no, that's way too high. This is an invitation, right? But what if she's really hurting? If so, and I do it, will that make me a bad person? Come on, quit teasing me. That's right. You're almost there. <gasps> will you grab them already? <laughs> <laughs> You grabbed them already! Yes. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> we were so close. <laughs> That's right! I'm Yamada's Eros deity, so I get to say things like that. I am a god of sexual desire! Basically, my job is to make sure Yamada gets her dirty, dirty freak freak on. I'm here to get your support. So great to meet you. The transcendent beauty Yamada's path to nailing 100 high school boys is not going to be one. <laughs> oh my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you haven't taken off your bra yet, now's the time. Hello, all. Today is physical checkups, everyone's favorite. Okay, next is Yamada. Height 164 centimeters. Weight 43 kilograms. Sitting height, 87 centimeters. Holy crap! She's perfect! Your legs are so long. Are they? 
Next up, Takeshita. <laughs> You've got the biggest boobs on earth. Those are like an F cup, right? Can you stop looking at me like that? You're freaking me out. <laughs> Turns out I haven't changed at all since last year. I don't get what Yamada's thinking at all. It's not even funny. I mean, it kind of seems like she's into me. Oh. Okay, maybe not. She doesn't even want to look my way. I hope you checked out my measurement stud. You can't resist perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Big yeah. gambit after school. Why don't we start with a kiss? <laughs> oh, man. Midterms are coming up. Will someone just kill me now? Quit stressing out. We'll just study together like normal. So are you going to ask Kosuda to be your study buddy this year? Why would I do that? I already don't like everything. That's not true. You're not so good at the math. Besides the math. Like you closer together. <laughs> good idea. But where? I mean, it's not like we're close enough to visit each other's houses yet. What's wrong with using the classroom? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, Kosuda! <laughs> I was talking about homework, not doing him on a desk. Wow. Kosuda, I've decided you should teach me math. Really? Yelling is what you went for here? Her eyes. Is that what I'm supposed to do with number four? So, this is the formula you would need to use to figure out the perimeter. Right, the other one's area. I'm impressed. He's like really smart. Oh, good. I think I might actually be helping her. Going back. So then, hold on. What about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't believe it. We totally just almost like on the mouth kissed. Wait, I feel an idea coming on. I've been completely focused on sex this whole time, but couples normally mug out first, right? I can't shoot <laughs> mug her out. when we haven't even been to first base yet. I can start off by kissing <laughs> her. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, and banging a hundred dudes starts with a first kiss. <laughs> Where did you have your first kiss? The number one answer is in his room or my room. Oh, yeah. Yamada. Kosuda. Congratulations on bringing your boy home for the first time like ever! <laughs> this is no good. You'll definitely have to be a Kosuda's. So how do I get there? Huh. How to H. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes! That's it! A few days later! Hey, wait, where did my umbrella go? <laughs> I'm awesome, you idiot! <laughs> did you forget your umbrella? Huh? I guess I have no other choice then. I'll share my umbrella ah. with you. Let's go. <laughs> so, Tsundere. Um, <laughs> I can hold it if you want. Oh, okay. So I wanted to say thanks. I got a good score on my math midterm, and I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, okay, cool. Wow, you're welcome. Man, she is so freaking cute. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> He just whacked her in the head with the umbrella. <laughs> His shoulders all soaked. Yeah. <laughs> I hope his house is kind of far away. Aww, so romantic. Yeah, the hydrangeas. Sorry for making you walk me home in the rain like this. Oh, no problem. Sorry for stealing your umbrella. <laughs> After he invites me inside, I just need to get into his room. Kosura. Yamada. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Little intense. What's the deal? Invite me in already. I wonder 
if I should invite her in already. <laughs> <laughs> Takashi, I didn't know you were home yet. Hey, sis, I guess you're skipping your college classes again? His sister? She's way pretty. So this means he's used to being around pretty women? Oh, you brought a girl home? I'm so proud of my precious baby brother! Get off me, you wacko! <laughs> he's used to girls' bodies! <laughs> my name's Kazuki. I'm a sophomore in college. Oh man, talk about surprised. I was not expecting Takashi to bring a girl home with him today. You're cute. Why are you hanging out with him? Come on. <laughs> Cut it out. Ahem. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Kosuda, where's your room? I'd like to see it. Uh, let me straighten it up first. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll be right back. Don't forget to put away all your dirty magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just like to give him a hard time. It's okay. I think it's natural, though, having dirty magazines, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yamada, you are hopeless. I'm glad you're here. My brother has always been pretty shy. Even though I tried to protect him, he was picked on all the time. But apparently he's managed to come out of all of that okay. I mean, Takashi's a genuinely good guy, and he deserves to be with a great girl. You know, someone cool who's into him. Sorry, sister, my motives aren't that pure. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, he's never been anything but a gentleman to me. I do know that much about him. Well, yay! Hey, Mom! Can we just have dinner near the station? Takashi's not hungry right now. All right, sister. Yeah. Hours, okay? You crazy kids have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for waiting. Kazuki, where did she go? We're gonna be alone for two hours. Awesome! <laughs> Went by the hour, don't they? That means we should have more than enough time. I was just planning on a kiss, but now make my little brother a man, won't you? <laughs> Who would figure his sister would approve of this? I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? I'll be back in a second with something to drink. That'll get him. No guy can refuse this position. Barley tea or iced coffee? That's all I've got, so which one? <laughs> She's oh, man. This is so stressful. What am I supposed to do next? Wait, I'll call Takeshita and ask her. Takeshita, hey! What do you want? I'm at the cash register right now. Oh, really? Where at? The drugstore? Drugstore? What did you buy? Nothing yet. I gotta go. <laughs> What's her deal? She acts like she was bought something embarrassing. Ha <laughs> ha! How scandalous. Was it this or that? Or this or that? Or this or that? Or this or that? Or this Skin or cream or for heat rash. <laughs> oh no. Speaking of the drugstore. Nightclub. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> <laughs> Do not enter. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> Yamada. Yamada. <laughs> Get yourself together. I'll just go back to plan A. Get a kiss. Now, focus and lighten the mood. Can I see your photo album, pretty please? Oh, here you go. Perfect. I'll be able to compliment him this way and make him feel more confident. Oh, how sweet. You were the cutest baby like ever. <laughs> 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 How fun! You're kind of like one of those babushka dolls. I wonder if that's supposed to be a compliment. Okay, this isn't working out. Desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> I'm going for it. Kill me, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was awful. I was too shocked to do anything but run. See, this path is a hard one. <laughs> so a little uh, different. Yes. <laughs> a little different. Oh, my sides hurt from laughing at that. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> it's definitely funny. Oh, wow. So that one also got to some aspects of Japanese culture. Yes, yes. Speaking of which. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. It, it's so yeah. interesting seeing a show that you know reverses the stereotype. Yes, that's yeah. that that I found very refreshing. Mm-hmm. Quite often in anime, you have the timid guy. Yeah, but this girl's making an effort. Mm. The timid guy, timid girl. This girl's making an effort, and we're seeing her struggle. Yeah, because usually you know the guy's struggle. <laughs> He's pretty obvious about it. This time you see both sides of the coin and you get the the interaction. I love when they're standing outside the door of the house. <laughs> When's he gonna w- invite me in? I wonder if I should invite her in. That happens all the time yeah. on dates. There's, that, that's perfect. I mean, that's that's the inner dialogue that that we wish we could hear you know, when we're out on the date. And exactly. uh, wow, that was funny. The, the romantic thing. Uh, the, Sharing the umbrella and then getting soaked. Yeah. Uh, of course, she stole the umbrella. So it's uh... yeah. It's fun how much the show plays around with comedic situations, um, and and plays around them with them for kind of romantic effect, hmm. uh, and how you you get the these silly little things, the, these ridiculous plots, and how they uh, they are used. And one of the things I really like about it is how they are used to further the relationship or further the characters, where they do learn a little something about what to do next, you know, <laughs> usually through making very bad mistakes. <laughs> There's nothing like learning from somebody else's bad mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's fu- that's so funny, Cedar. <laughs> She's going through her checklist. Okay. <laughs> you know, he's, he's going through his checklist. Mm-hmm. Well, she said this, she did that. <laughs> I... I Call her obnoxious, but she did flash me, <laughs> so maybe she does like me. It's it, it, the they they did use a, a a standard of of situational comedy, which I think mm. is it, it worked really well. Is is the misunderstanding? Yeah. Uh, when she gets her measurements, she flashes her yeah. measurements at him to show how beautiful she is because she got all the accolades from mm-hmm. the other girls yeah. for having such long legs and. <laughs> All he sees is a girl who's hiding her face from him. <laughs> oh, what? She won't even look at me. <laughs> exactly. And I, I think that's a great example of how to use it well, where you know, that doesn't drive a wedge between them for the next five episodes. Yeah. You know, it's just a, a funny little thing that happens. Like, they just, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, too, to me how, um, how much the show deals with, or at least this episode deals with... Um, Sort of uh, social expectations. Oh yeah. Where how like you know, she needs to figure out how to kiss him, so she goes to a magazine and their poll of where you kiss your. your, your uh... Statistically speaking, <laughs> I should be here, here, or here. My chances. <laughs> right. Well, and and that is so much of of what Yamada is doing is that she's comparing herself to this expectation of well, well, of course you go to high school. Well, of course you know you're sleeping around all the time. That's just what everyone does. That's what you know what high school girls do. Um, uh, it's you know, all the you know these various things. Uh, uh, so just, it, you know it's really funny seeing them play off all those ex- expectations. Uh, and it's one of the things I'm I'm curious about. I haven't seen the rest of the, the rest of the show, um, but I'm, I'm curious to see what, whether Yamada starts learning how to uh, you know, kind of have her own desires a little bit more. <laughs> oh, the sister, the sister who goes out to get dinner. <laughs> hey, wait! I never said you could. T- <laughs> the imagination. Yeah, Yamada Make definitely. My brother uh, a man. <laughs> Hey, Yamada definitely takes as much as she can get. Yeah. <laughs> and her friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's interesting, too, about how Yamada is... Um, um, it's interesting looking at her at her character design. Let me see if I can uh, flash back and see a, a bit of her. 
her uh, characters on here at some point. Um, get a better visual of her face. <laughs> but um, her crazy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Very expressive show, actually. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting how you notice how she she has you can't see it in this one, but uh, she has the the two earrings in the one ear, uh, which is very fashionable uh, to have kind of the um, uh, the a uh, kind of an, an odd number of yeah. of earrings there. Um, <laughs> Rub my tummy. <laughs> and he's That'll like, work. I don't know. <laughs> she's gonna smack me. Maybe she's really sick. <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> she's coming on to me, but what is she gonna say? Um, and that, that, that's cute. Um, <laughs> the library smells like wet dog and socks. Dirty socks. <laughs> dirty socks wrapped in a wet dog. dog. <laughs> A lot of those fun little asides <laughs> in the episode. Um, she's definitely cute. It's also interesting how she has the um, like the auburn hair, mm. uh, which is apparently a, a very uh, popular thing these days. Is mm. for girls in Japan to um, to dye their hair a sort of a, a anywhere from a light to a dark brown, Ooh. and it's just you know very trendy. Um, it's interesting how they they made a character that is obviously um, trying to evoke modern Amer- modern Japanese girls. Oh, okay. And, and what they're going after, <laughs> um, and uh, just uh, uh, definitely, a bit, but, um, but also to that point, like there's nothing dramatically different about her either. You know, she doesn't have punk hair or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're real trying, girl. Little, yeah, exactly. Real problems. Uh, <laughs> I want to get past <laughs> this point in my life. Uh, although her 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 goals are very ambitious in my <laughs> perspective. <laughs> this is true. Yes. <laughs> Well, and, and to that point, it, it's remarkable how um, upfront the mm. show is about things. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that that that's sort of uh, shocking yet refreshing. Yeah. Uh, so often uh, these subjects are just glossed over, mm. and people are expected to make their own mistakes. Here, yeah. I can live through hers. <laughs> <laughs> she she her her experience is 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 quite funny, and uh, mm. so far she's. She's got a little bit of counsel from her mm. magazines and <laughs> her experiences. Her friends are starting yeah. to, uh, they, could, they could probably uh, say something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of funny the way that uh, I find that uh, this anime is different from our previous mm-hmm. anime. That the, Of course, the digital age, yeah. it's, it's very, very different different narrative Mm -hmm. but we have a character here that appears the erotic deity yeah (laughs) on her shoulder the little angel at her shoulder um that uh, is trying to guide her Mm -hmm. and uh apparently has some some conscience about (laughs) stealing the guy's umbrella (laughs) but the outcome didn't seem to (laughs) seem to work out actually (laughs) and um when she refers to uh, experiences the background uh, suddenly when she's describing him as cherry boy yeah he <laughs> the whole background is just cherries 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 <laughs> so 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 it goes away from like the literal mm. what's in the background to mm-hmm. to more of a figurative yeah sort of more playful i think i i don't remember seeing that as much in earlier animation interesting it's sort of like the language of anime has mm-hmm. changed over time, and this being how many years yeah, after the other one? Twenty-five like yeah. years. Uh, some some of the the narrative devices uh, yeah. uh, in in animation, uh, the aside, the internal mm-hmm. discussions, th- those are similar, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly a much more rapid fire. Um, oh, like approach. Wow. yeah. It's very. <laughs> <laughs> it amazes me how much happens in they this episode. They fit a lot into it. They really did. Yeah, it, it's it's really interesting how, um, uh, as you say, I think certainly the um, uh, the language ha- has evolved a lot, having those little side characters. It's also interesting here, actually, t- to that point, how m- how much this is um, uh, established in the real world, mm-hmm. where... You know, yes, obviously there are little goofy moments where she's turned around and, you know, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but, but this very much feels like real people in modern Japan 
you know, dealing with, with modern problems as, as opposed to some of those you know, slightly fantasy. more, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or even not just fantasy, but also you see a lot of screwball comedies where, okay, they're going to school, but it's a little bit more of a, a light, loose, you know, sort of experience. Uh, Whereas, you know, that feels like a teacher. That feels like a, a, a classmate. Um, these feel like real experiences a little bit more. Yeah, they, 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 <clears throat> they do have that more realistic feel to them that mm. I, I, was, I was thinking, yeah, I can, I can draw a lot more parallels in my life <laughs> yeah, to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because of the, the shared experiences mm-hmm. and... Uh, uh, the subject matter is is a riot. I I, I, I like I really like the approach of seeing it from the girl's perspective. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm I'm sure there's a whole gamut, but having somebody who's 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 trying to make that change in her life and she just doesn't have the skills <laughs> yeah, right. yet to really <laughs> make that leap and yeah. and she's going through the growing and learning process of oh no I can't just suddenly show him <laughs> everything and, and seeing 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 the girl fail at it is 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 kind of fun because uh we we see the guy's side quite frequently mm-hmm. and uh yeah, it's uh, it's good to see the other side every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> and what a great example of, of why so many anime are set in high school, because mm-hmm. you know you have so, all of these huge emotions going through oh, you. Yeah. Um, and boy, isn't this a great example of that? She where is you just, you know... a prime example of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raging hormones. <laughs> Extreme solutions to commonplace problems. Well, something that they did that. Uh, mm. uh, I've seen in other uh, Japanese uh, uh, manga mm-hmm. and uh, anime is, is the health checkup. Yeah. Uh, we don't really do that in the same way here in the U.S., but it seems to be, uh, since I've seen it in several mm-hmm. other things, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is something that the schools do where they yeah. measure a person's height and weight and growth and progress and development. Yeah, it's it's a very common thing. Um, it happens, as far as I know, in all the, the schools across Japan. Um, and it's just, like you say, it measures your growth, it measures how you've you've been uh, maturing physically. Um, obviously, uh, somewhat embarrassing as you grow up. <laughs> Having the statistics there to show, and and especially in in high school and at oh, that yeah. age, uh, the. Um, Breast size comparison was <laughs> always kind of a, a funny thing in other other uh, series, and this one it's particularly amusing. Um, you know, <laughs> her friend, wow, you've got to stop it. <laughs> well, and it's kind of amazing thing that it, each person then gets a report card that they carry yeah. back with them. <laughs> Here my you God. go. Uh, <laughs> here's my stats. <laughs> Did I make the grade? <laughs> but um, yeah, and it would be interesting to see. I, I honestly don't know how much that is. Um, um, I, I'm assuming that that's then tabulated and used, you know, nationwide. Statistics. Yeah. So it'd be very interesting to see how that's used. Hmm. Yeah. I, I wonder. I think the most that we got was maybe a scoliosis test and height and weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingerprinting at some point. But um, it, it's interesting, actually, uh, contrasting the, this. We were talking about the colors in, in mm. Tenchi, how this has a, a much more standard anime color palette, if you will. Yeah. Where it's it's got it's, it's quite oh. bright. <laughs> the chibi faces. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, with this, whoa, what's with these chibi faces? Ah, <laughs> so so chibi is a um, it's a, a style that's evolved over time in Japan as this way of um, getting across a character's uh, emotional state in a very extreme way. Hmm. So if a character is is feeling um, well. It's used in, in, in many different ways. Sometimes you'll have an entire series done in that chibi style um, to get across characters who have a more um, uh, sort of an, an extreme set of emotions, if you will, more childlike. Um, and so chibi, in, in this case, especially in a lot of, uh, of comedies, um, is used to represent a character who is who is acting in more sort of primal, childlike ways than the normal, where they just it's, it's all <laughs> anger or frustration or joy or what have you. It, it can be a lot of fun. <laughs> the little hearts floating in the yeah. air. Ah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a very um, um, a bright and colorful and light show, which I think uh, really helps to the tone of the show. I think if this show had been colored the same way the Tenchi had, much more dark, much more um, uh, serious, uh, I think it would have given it a, a more serious tone, whereas mm. this makes it a, a little bit, uh, it, it telegraphs that this is a, a fun show. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's fun. So where do you think the show's going? Oh, this is a riot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to kiss first before I have the relations. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's funny. Uh, mm-hmm. I can I can see her her going through a circuitous route and and <laughs> and and finally getting a chance to mm-hmm. develop a, a relationship with somebody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I, I I can picture her friends probably coming into yeah, it and his I friends so. coming into it. Of course, all his friends were, were around. <laughs> oh, can we take your picture? She's so hot. And they're like, they're probably going to say, hey, why you? <laughs> you, you? Why you? Why not me? <laughs> and uh, her friends, I, I wonder if they'll be able to restrain her. Yeah. <laughs> not Are they going to live vicariously fun. through her? Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's hmm. a good question. So she can go and make oh, all the stupid mistakes yeah. and we'll be- sit back and watch. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that they'll um, they'll build up a nice relationship over time. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing these two characters um, uh, start to get to know each other uh, and, and realize how uh, how important that is for for the relationship uh, to to sort of enjoy themselves. It's one thing that's nice about this episode is it, is it shows they are kind of sort of a little bit you know getting to know each other a little bit better, yeah. which is fun. Um, I, I did discover in Googling that uh, in this show, um, not only does Yamada have an Aerogami character, so does Kosuda. Oh. So that's going to be interesting to see where that. <laughs> I wonder if the two get together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> cool. Any final thoughts on Yamada? I want to see where this goes. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really fun show, and it's also impressive, actually, the the animation quality. I mean, they they've kept it very, very high quality. Characters are on model, and characters are, um, um, uh, you know, they have an extreme um, uh, different uh, character expressions and things along those lines, which can tend to kind of deform a character in various ways. Uh, but they seem very consistent throughout the episode. Yeah. So, uh, you know, first episode's always a little different, but uh, you know, uh, very impressive so far. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. There's there's a lot of um, uh, text that's still mm. not translated into English. Yeah. Uh, the, the words in the dictionary. Yeah, some yeah. Of, some, <laughs> some some of the areas, and uh, I suppose there's probably some fan sub that somebody's got where they've translated everything. But there's there there's different things in there that uh, uh, it, it's yeah it, it seems it seems kind of neat. I'm kind of mm. curious uh, what some of the some of the literature is that they yeah. <laughs> that they have. Uh, some of it's obvious, you know, the mm. magazine that. <laughs> but uh, it, it's fun seeing that sometimes. And, yeah. Uh, depending on who's doing the the uh, uh, U.S. edition, mm. whether it's fans or uh, 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 Funimation or mm. whoever, sometimes they'll put that in. And, yeah. And uh, it would be interesting to see how how in depth they go with putting that kind of information up there <laughs> yeah you have to dig in and see if we can find that information that'll be, yeah. that'll be fun cool yeah this, a, this is a very fun one to watch cool it was <laughs> absolutely yeah it's, it's a this is a fun goofy one um and uh, but it, man, the, there's something there yeah. Um, it, it, yeah it's nice seeing a show that is a goofy comedy but also has kind of a heart it, it has some yeah. kind of a uh, somewhere it's going with all with all of this uh, the silliness. <laughs> I can definitely relate to some of these. Uh, <laughs> should I invite her in? <laughs> When's he gonna invite me in? <laughs> yeah. The date moment. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been there. Cool. All right. Well, that is. Uh, uh, those are our our two episodes. There's Tenchi. There's Yamada, and we'll uh, be returning to that in future episodes. So, um, I think that's. That's us for this time. Any any final thoughts? Hmm. What should we watch next time? That's a very good question. Upcoming events. Yeah. We'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll find out. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think that, that'll do it for us. So this was Smoke and Mirrors. It very was. Um, I'm Brent. I'm Evan. Thanks for joining us. Join again. <laughs> 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 and then I draw my paper. <laughs> <laughs>